Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is sat chat time. If you're a regular viewer, let me know how the lighting looks because I realized I didn't bring my ring light over today, but I was looking at the monitor and I'm like, I think it's better. I think it's better because before, because I usually think it's too bright, but it's like, I, I don't know. Um, I like the bright light kind of coming slightly from below to blast out any wrinkles. But I'm just kind of like, you know, it's always so bright. It's always so bright when I watch it on my TV. But it, maybe it's too dark today. You can let me know that in the comments. And let me know what you're up to on this fine weekend. Um, first things first, I want to let you know that you can sign up for this class over at michaels.com slash classes. I'll put a direct link in the video description that will take you right to this. It's free and it will be on November 15th. And also, I have a favor to ask. Um... Michael's classes for the past couple of years have only been available to United States and Canadian residents, but I've heard from, um, I've heard that some Canadian residents aren't able to log on. So if you, and sign up. So if you are, um, if you are signing up for that class and you're in Canada, can you let me know if you were able to register or not? Uh, I don't know why that's happening all of a sudden because way back then, anyone throughout the world could sign up and then Michael's had to revamp their website and then all of a sudden it was only working for USA and Canada, which is where they have their physical stores. So I figured maybe there was some sort of like restriction as far as like out of their their shopping vicinity but um i'm hearing now some canadians are having a hard time getting in so if you're canadian registering for michael's classes let me know if you're able to sign up or not um hopefully you are um and then there'll be a replay like the following monday for everybody on the michael's youtube channel so you can see it regardless, uh, even if you can't come to the live class. But, you know, I, I did notice my last live class that the, my numbers were lower, like significantly lower than usual. And that might be why. That might be why. Because I reached out to my my um, my contact at Michael's and I was like, I have a, a student from Canada who's having a hard time signing up. Can you give me a reason why? And they said sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There's been some issues with Canada. Um, so I'm not sure why that is, uh, signing up for the USA classes, but just let me know and, um, hopefully we can figure out what's what, cause I need to restrict it further. Um, I really have no, no control or say over, <laughs> over that other than the content that's in the class, but, um, but it's nice to know cause I don't want to tell people they can sign up and then they go to sign up and they can't sign up cause that's just a bummer. And I don't like to disappoint people. I really don't. Um, okay. So where are we? <laughs> I have a list. I have a list. It's been a pretty good week. Dad's home from the hospital, um, so that's good. He got home Wednesday night, late Wednesday night, um, and he'd been there for over two weeks, and that's been rough. That was rough for him. So, uh, so far, so good. I need to call down to to their, to their mom and dad's house to see how he's doing today, but um, but so far, so good. So better, better than being in the hospital. I'm telling you, that's, that's, huff, that's hard on somebody's, that's hard on somebody's uh, mental well-being, you know, it, like a day at the hospital can be like a week, so I'm glad he's home. And I've just been kind of putzing around, puttering, playing on different, working on different projects. Uh, the uh, uh, two of my kids came over for dinner on Wednesday. It was nice. We just we've had a lot of just cozy home stuff going on, which is nice. Um, very much needed after kind of feeling like I've been rushing around the last couple of weeks. Uh, this week I kind of got obsessed. So if you watched you, my, uh, if you, if you catch up with my YouTube videos, I think I posted a video almost every day this week, except for Friday. Um, I posted this video, the tutorial for this, um, fish and chips using, <laughs> using oil sticks. I know that's not the type of fish that you would get if you bought fish and chips, but I thought that was more aesthetically pleasing. And this, I painted on deli paper that my daughter had given me. Um, she worked at this Irish pub this summer and my husband and I went in for dinner and um, and he ordered fish and chips and it was on this deli paper and I'm like oh that's so cool could I get a sheet of that and I was like I'm willing to buy a couple sheets and she just gave me a sheet and it's been sitting in the precious bin for like since the summer so I'm like I'm gonna use that I had this idea of what I wanted to do and I'm like I'm gonna do it with the oil sticks and this is already dry. It's crazy how fast the oil sticks dry. So then I was, I, I, I don't know what it is. I just can't, just can't like casually enjoy something. I have to like go to the extreme. So I was using a combination of the Winsor Newton oil bars that are like, I've had them for 25 years. They don't even make them anymore. And a new set of Sennelier oil sticks. I can actually show you the packages here. Oh, I think, oh my gosh, did it stick? <laughs> did I stick it? <laughs> did it glue itself? Um, so I've got this Vintage Beauty, 
and then I've got these. So this, these are, I think, the way to go if you want to buy some oil sticks to try. I think this is your best bet. They're like $22 and change um, at Blick, and you get six colors, and they're smaller. So like the, um, these are like 12 ml sticks, and I think if you buy a stick from Sennelier, it's like 38 ml, so it's significantly larger. But there's a lot of paint in those guys, and you can see if you like it before you invest. And then, you know, you could buy a stick at a time as you use up the color that you, you know, that you used up. I think I preferred the oil bars. Uh, they seem to be a little bit more pigmented and a little bit more dense, but they're no longer available. Elbow says these are 12 ml sticks, but these look like they're twice as big. I don't know. But anyway, I have these, and then I was like, ooh, I kind of would like some more oil sticks, but it's like, Lindsay, slow your rolls. Why don't you use what you have? They've been sitting in your stash for 25 years, and you haven't been compelled to do anything with them. I mean, I have used them before. Not all the colors, though. Um, so it's like, why don't you see if you can use these up before you think about buying more oil paint sticks? Because then, you know, part of you is like, oh, maybe I should try this brand. Maybe I should try that brand. You know, hate to miss out on a better option. But then I was thinking, gosh, you know, I have... I have a lot of oil paint. Oil sticks are just oil paint in a stick form. I have so much oil paint. And because I used to paint in oils a lot before I um, solely had my home studio. Back when I had um, my studio downtown, I painted in oils all the time. I taught two adult oil painting classes a week. I always had a big oil painting, like a personal project going that I would just kind of putter around on between classes. And I loved it. I absolutely loved having a painting on the go all the time. But when I, I closed the studio, when I got pregnant with twins, and I really didn't want to have solvents and things like that out, plus I didn't have a lot of time to be painstakingly working on an oil painting. Um, it's a little bit more involved, you know, you get the cleanup, you get the setup, you've got, then you've got paint, oil paint out, and I didn't want the fumes around the kids and whatnot. So they've just been sitting, and I have so much oil paint because I would buy those honking big, like 200 ml tubes of Windsor Newton paint because I mean, I would have it, I'd be able to put it out for my students if they were missing a color, and I liked having that stock, but it's like, wow. I, luckily, it's all still good. Um, so I was thinking, okay, oil paint is pigment, a drying oil like linseed oil, and wax. And like, I've got oil paint. Oil paint is pigment and a drying oil. And then I'm like, and I've got a ton of oil pastels, and I also want wanted to get some Karen Nash oil pastels. I bought some like open stock, like a handful of them last winter. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I love these, these pastels. I want a big set, but they're so expensive. And I'm like, Lindsay, you've got to use up some of your oil pastels before you buy more. Um, and so it's like, hmm, I know how I can use up some oil pastels. So I took oil pastels and I kind of chopped them up and I melted them down because there, there's the wax. Now oil pastels are wax, pigment, and drying oil. Oil paint sticks are wax, pigment, and a drying oil. The the pastels, oil pastels are wax pigment and a non-drying oil like mineral oil. And oil paint sticks are wax pigment and a drying oil like linseed oil. So I'm like, well, what if I took some oil pastels and I melted them down with some oil paint and I added some extra linseed oil in there to make sure it's gonna dry. And I'm like, I think I could probably make oil paint sticks that way. So here's what I've been doing. <laughs> for the past day. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. It was so messy. So, so messy. I I want to make more, but I want to see which one of these, which, which of these formulations work a little bit better. Hopefully they work. Maybe I've just made more oil pastels. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> which gets you away from my goal of using up oil pastels, but here we are. So there's my swatch of the colors I made. I know way too many greens, but I kept having like all this extra green left over, so I had to keep making more green pastels. But, uh, so those are the colors I made. There's a little blending swatch there. Oh my gosh, they are a dream. They're so creamy and nice. So, um, the cool tones I used, um, I used refined linseed oil, this stuff right here. Uh, I used oil paint and oil pastels. And I used, um, I had a bunch of uh, like macaron colored oil pastels because this was such a weird thing that happened a couple of years ago. Um, I uh, Amazon is so weird and sellers on Amazon have to, they, there's, there's so many fees when a seller sells on Amazon. So um, I review stuff from Paula Rubens quite frequently. And one of the reps from Paula Rubens reached out to me and she's like, um, we've got to clear out the warehouse of, we overstocked this product. Uh, we've got to clear it out because, you know, the warehouse fees are expensive. Do you want some oil pastels? And I'm like, sure. Thinking, I'll, a box. I was thinking like a box or two of oil pastels. They were like, 
40 boxes. They sent me 40 boxes of oil pastels. And I've been giving out oil pastels like you would not believe. I've donated so many to the school. And I still have a bunch. So I started off with the um, with those macaron oil pastels, and I figured, well, I'll make I'll make tints, right? So a tint is a color plus white. And I'll make some tints because all my uh, all my uh, my store bought ones are all really bold, like saturated colors. And I'm like, oh great, I'll make some tints. I'll get to um, experiment with them, see how it goes. And uh, yeah, so I melted those down, and I did it. I at first I put it in like a Dixie cup on a, like a cup warmer, like a mug warmer. I was hoping I would be able to do it like that, but it just didn't get hot enough and. Um, so what I ended up doing was just taking my heat tool, uh, chopping up the oil pastel, taking the heat tool, melting it, then mixing in the oil paint and melting it enough so it's liquid and then putting it in these, um, these ice cube molds right here that I got. There was a two pack for two bucks at Ocean State Job Lot and I've got one tray that I'm using for warm colors and one for cool colors. So hopefully I don't have to wash them very much because they are, it's a messy, very messy project. Um, but yeah, they're so creamy and nice. So the cool color ones I added linseed oil to, the warm color ones I didn't add linseed oil to because I figured the paint has linseed oil in them as well. And um, so I'm gonna see which ones dry. If they, hopefully they all dry, we'll see which ones dry quicker. Probably the ones without additional linseed oil. Well, they might, unless the drying, the non-drying oils in the pastels counteract it, I don't know. Um, so if that doesn't work, I thought, and this didn't occur to me until after I made all these, I thought, well, um, and I could just use beeswax. My husband has beeswax uh, over in his shop because he makes um, cutting boards and you melt down beeswax and mineral oil to make the the wax, the, not the wax, what do you call it? Like the, when you restore your cutting boards, you make this paste out of those, out of beeswax and mineral oil. And then you rub that over the, the, um, over the cutting board to make it, uh, kind of to condition it. I, I'm not saying that right. You know, it just kind of preserves it. You So you have to wax your cutting boards every once in a while. So anyway, he, he will use that. But he has tons of beeswax. I'm like, I could use that, but I'd rather use up stuff that is not going to get used in its current condition. But And plus, these oil pastels already have some pigment in them. Um, and, but then I was thinking, well, if the drying oil and the oil pastels are too pervasive and the linseed oil does not counteract the non-drying aspect and it, and it doesn't dry, then I could chop up. So I bought a bunch of crayons at one point, wax crayons to just try, kind of compare a bunch. I could use that for my wax. Um, granted, the, the pigments in the crayons probably aren't light fast, but I'm not relying on, the, on those pigments to be light fast. I'm, I'd be relying on my oil paint, which is. And I have so much oil paint. I've got, I don't even know where some of it came from. Some of it must have been given to me, um, like donated or something because um, like Melfa, I have no, I don't even know what brand that is. I don't, my, uh, maybe it says what brand that is. Let me see. Uh, made in the USA. I don't know this company, but it says made in the USA. It is professional, American Artist Professional League, Melfa Artist Oil Color. Oh, F.W. Weber, F.F. Weber. WF Weber, something F Weber. Anyway, I've got some of that. I've got Windsor Newton. I've got a lot of Winton. Actually, I have to say, I don't know if Winton oils are still good, but the Winton from the 90s are beautiful. They feel like high-end paints compared to some recent oil, more recent oil paints that I've gotten. So I'm just trying to use up the stuff that's kind of getting a little, a little firm in the tube or that I have dregs left of and um, get it in a format that's going to be more convenient to use because I love how, how quickly the oil paint sticks dry because of the wax that are in them. And it's just, it's messy to make them, but I feel like it's less messy to paint with them. And I just like how immediate it is and how fat, how much faster it is to paint with the oil sticks versus traditional oils, it seems to me. Maybe I just like the fact that there's no no setup, like no palette. I mean, you do use a palette to mix stuff, but you're not setting up a whole palette. Uh, it's kind of like how while of watercolor, I open the, the the palette and I go, right? And the oil sticks are kind of like that too, which means I also don't want to have too many colors because then it will just be overwhelming again. Um, so I don't know, I got to find that balance. But what I was thinking, and I looked in the Dollar Tree, I had to go to the Dollar Tree last night because after making all these, my nails are so gross. I looked like a dirty hobo and I didn't have a nail brush. So I'm like, I could go to the Dollar Tree and buy a nail brush because I don't have one and I can't, could not get my nails clean. It was so gross. And um, while I was at it, I thought, oh, I need something to store my oil pastels and my first thought was a lipstick. A li I, I swear I've seen a lip, like an acrylic lipstick organizer. Probably not acrylic, but you know that same idea that you put the little lipstick tubes in there. And I thought they had them held nine or something, couldn't find them. But I did find this document case. 
magical. It's kind of like the uh, the clipboard case that I have markers in, um, but it's just just a smidgen too shallow. This is only probably about three quarters of an inch, and those sticks are probably about an inch. I don't know. It's just a little bit too shallow for them. Um, but I did want to mention that because this might be a nice option for putting markers in. Let's see if markers if markers will fit in this like they do the clipboard. Yeah, markers will fit in here. So you could definitely do markers in there and then be able to draw on the top or make yourself, make your kids like a little, um, you know, road trip thing, like keep some paper and some colored pencils or something in. But anyways, Dollar dollar Tree. They only had yellow, green, and red last night. I don't know if they carry, carry other colors, but um, eh. So it didn't work for that. I'd say it's about eight and a half by 11. Uh, do, I, do I have a piece of paper that is that size? Hmm, what this? Let's see, this sketch is nine by 12. This sketchbook's nine by 12. Okay, so it's about nine by 12. That's the size of that sketchbook. So anyway, um, I also bought a, a Tupperware. It's over there, Tupperware over there. Not not real Tupperware, obviously, but it was. It's about that big, but it's thick. But it's it's like that thick. So I don't know. For right now, I'm just going to use the like trays, like lids, lids of things for them. I think uh, I'll probably have. I probably have stuff. I know I have so many old Derwent tins and tins from stuff that I have since uh, put into other like my pencils over there. So I might use that. I don't know. I just want it to be convenient so I actually use it because that would be me. That would be so Lindsay's MO. She goes and makes all of this like all of these things and then never uses them because <laughs> like all the fun apparently was in the making of the supplies not actually using the supplies. I was also thinking that if the pastel thing works out really well, I have those jumbo oil pastels from Paul Rubens that I could also chop up to put in the oil paint sticks. Um, as far as molds go, these work pretty good. Um, I like it that I don't have to like, because I've seen some people make oil paint sticks online and they you, they took like a marker and they wrap it with tin foil and then they would uh, melt wax and um, oil paint and linseed oil, I think. Maybe they didn't add linseed oil. I can't remember. Maybe they just did wax and oil paint. And then they would pour it into those little, those containers they made. But the, I didn't want to use all that, that uh, tin foil if I didn't have to. And then what I did is I just, I just took deli paper and I cut it into little pieces and put some, put a, like a strip of packing tape on it and wrapped them up so that I'd have a clean place to hold on to. And then I could kind of cut the, um, the wrapping off as I go because you also have to peel like the skin off. So hopefully those are going to set like form a skin around them to protect the paint on the inside. And then you'll cut off that, st that skin as you go. Um, so that's what I'm hoping that, <laughs> so you'll have to stay tuned. My hair is kind of weird today. I, uh, this, I, uh, I usually wash my hair once a week, whether it needs it or not. And today I was like, mm, I think it looks all right. I don't think I need to wash my hair today. And today was the day. Today was day seven and needed a wash. Um, but I thought, nah, I don't want to go, I don't want to walk the dog with wet hair. It's getting cold. It was chilly this morning. Um, it's like, it's stocking hat and puffer jacket weather in Maine now. Um, not the heaviest, like, parka puffer jacket, but definitely. I didn't have gloves on and I was like, oh, I should have wore gloves. Um, and I didn't want to go out with wet hair. And so I threw some curlers in it, but it's definitely, ugh, it's, it's feeling a little, it's feeling a little dirty, to be honest. <laughs> dirty nails, dirty hair. I'm a hobo. But... A fun, crafty, sketchy hobo. Anyway, so don't mind that. Don't mind the, the weird lighting or the dirty hair <laughs> or fingernails or whatever. Oh, oh my goodness. What else do we have to talk about? Um, oh yes, 40% off my drawing class, my Learn to Draw with Lindsay and my alcohol marker workshop is still going through the month. I will have, um, I filmed a couple of alcohol marker tutorials. I don't know if I'm going to do them as individual tutorials or do like four together because I'm doing like a, a layout using my Sketchbook Lucy template and I'm doing like four on a, on a square page. So I think I might just do it as one long thing and, and um, talk about the techniques as I go through in a time lapse. I'm not sure. But um, anyway, that's, that's what I'm going to do there. But I, I'll put links to those classes if you want to snag those on sale. Lifetime access, so even if you don't have time to do them now, but you want to buy them while they're on sale, you can do that. Or if you're buying them for a gift for someone, you can do that too with the sale price. You just want to check that this is a gift option um, on the page, and it will walk you through how to how to do that. Um, oh, so something that was kind of weird. 
Last week I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw this post and I don't know if you've ever heard of this company before but it's called Create and Craft and they are like a, it's like home shopping but it's craft supplies and it's a UK home shopping channel and every once in a while I would tune in because like you could also watch their their programs on their website and every once in a while I'd tune in especially if it was like a like I knew there was going to be a uh, a company that I wasn't familiar with, like especially with something that we can't get here, it's always fun to see what other people or what other countries have offering for their craft companies. And um, there was, a, they had posted something about, um, we'll, be, we'll be off the air for a few days, we're gonna show repeats, uh, hopefully we'll be back in the air next Tuesday. And so I'm like, well, that's weird. And there was all sorts of speculation and a lot of people posting that um, they'd ordered from this company and not received their orders yet. And, and I guess how this place works, and I don't really know too much about it, but I did glean quite a bit from the comments on this, um, on this post, that they, it's kind of like Home Shopping Network or QVC in the United States where you would tune in and there would be people that are demonstrating products and people would, would call in and buy, or I guess they could go to the website and buy. So um, they would have people on from different craft companies and they, they, they would show the products and then people would call in and order them and Crane and Craft would, would uh, be kind of like Amazon. It would, it would bill your card and then they would, and then the, um, the people that had paid to be on their program to show their wares would ship out the product. And then like, I guess Crane and Craft would pay the vendors, pay the people that, that were shipping out the product. This is what I'm just leaning from what I saw on the thing. Anyway, um, I guess that the, the company had been in trouble and the vendors hadn't been being paid and orders hadn't been shipped out because the vendors hadn't been paid for them yet. And um, some companies are honoring them even though they haven't been they haven't been paid for, they haven't received the money that people gave Crate and Craft for the products. So it's kind of crazy. It's kind of, um, it seemed like it was such a big company too. I think they've been around for like 20 years and I'd see them advertised sometimes and you know, you just hear about them and I'd, you know, tune in every once in a while. So it's just kind of fun, kind of fun to see something different like that. Um, Cause in, in America, like we have home shopping channels and like once a month they'll do a craft day and they'll advertise it. And if I think about it and we have enough cable at the time, then I will tune in and just see what people are, what, what different companies are showing because it's kind of fun to see what's new. Um, cause you'd always see like Anna Griffin and, um, and stuff like that. It's just neat to see. And if somebody invents something new, it's fun to see it. Uh, so anyway, I, I remembered that today. It's like, oh, I wonder whatever happened with that. I wonder if they're back on the air. So I, I Googled them. There was still repeats on their website. So I went to Facebook and they had posted that it's, um, they're still not back operational. Um, there's really no information being, being, uh, put out there about it. I don't know if they're, have gone bankrupt or what, but, um, it's just interesting. So if you are a customer, you might just want to see if you have any outstanding orders. You might want to talk to your credit card company if, you know, you haven't been, if you haven't been able to get a hold of anybody or have your order shipped. I mean, that's probably the safest thing to do, but it's just, uh, it's such a, such a big company to see something like that happen. I thought was a little unnerving, but it just kind of goes onto that whole, that, that whole, um, kind of like avalanche of craft companies and stamp companies closing this past year. It's, um, every week it seems like there's a new company, but just, I just want to mention that in case you do ha you have ordered something recently and haven't received your order, you might want to just like check in on that to make sure that if you're, if it's not going to be coming, then, you know, you can get your money back anyway. Then you could do that through your credit card company if you can't do it through Crate and Craft. Uh, I have no affiliation with them. I don't really know that much about the businesses, but I have been following that this week because I because it's you know it's a uh, it's it's uh, concerning, interesting. Um, something else is kind of concerning and interesting is that I so I'm a I'm a YouTuber. Obviously, you're watching this on YouTube. So every once in a while. YouTube e emails creators when they want you to do something. They have been sending me a lot of emails over the past couple of years asking me to make a membership thing and I'm not interested in doing memberships. I have enough going on. I don't need to be adding anything else to my plate. And recently they've added on this thing called YouTube shop, YouTube shopping, which is kind of like TikTok shop. So if I'm using a product, then I can, um, uh, I can see if it's if YouTube has a has a connection with some other company that sells that product like Walmart.com or Target.com or whatever I don't know all their stores um, and I could link to it and I, otherwise I don't they might even put the products underneath my videos 
without me linking to it. I'm not sure how that goes. I've only thought to do it a couple times um, for um, for products, and it's weird because it will be like it'll be sold at Macy's or Walmart or something like that. But it's it's I'm like uh, those prices aren't as good as my affiliate links that I put in my video descriptions, anyways. So whatever. I mean, shop wherever you want to shop. But I, they sent out an email this week saying that um, we're welcoming Timu to the YouTube shopping family, and I was just like. That's wild. That's wild. I don't, I, I and, and I'm like, cause I, I always ask myself, why does Timu bother me so much? You know, I don't talk about it too much because I don't want anyone to feel judged or shamed for wherever they shop. And I don't have a problem with the people that shop at Timu. I don't have a problem with the, with the people that sell through Timu. I think what I have an issue with is the unfair practices of Timu itself and how like they force sellers to, to take a big hit on what they're selling and they have this kind of like gambling almost like um if you ever go to their website there's like spinning wheels and there's you know these it's, it's very gambly it's very like video gamey and i don't like that so because sometimes i'll see something i'll be like googling something and that will come up and i'll click on it and it'll bring me to the website it's just so much flashing lights and just overwhelming i'm like nope um i'm out um but the, the thing that really i think that really bothers me is that they will take a hit on every sale, it says they lose like thirty dollars per sale. So they that that the company takes this hit on every sale, so that people can buy things super super cheap, so cheap that people can't compete. Amazon can't even compete. Uh, the dollar stores can't even compete. Um, and so of course, um, like companies that have their labor force in uh, the United States, Canada, um, Europe, they can't compete with those with those prices at all. Actually, even companies in China really couldn't compete if Timu was in subsidizing every order and with so many stamp companies going out of business and so many people buying knockoffs i think and then these things being being sold for way less than it costs to make them i think just kind of it irks me that the platform does that um that it creates such an unfair trade practice you know i guess but there are changes there are changes i guess they're they're getting rid of that de minimis rule where anything valued under 800 dollars can come into the country without tariffs and without customs and duties and everything so duties um so that's probably going to change that's probably going to change that just happened like this week i think um so that might make it a little bit easier for american companies to compete which i think will be a good thing um, but the other thing, I, I, don't, I don't like big companies that come in and they make things super cheap and they put all kinds of people out of business and then they jack the prices up, you know, because they can remove their subsidies, kind of like um, all, the, all those delivery apps, all those like the, um, the Lyfts and the Ubers and the DoorDashes and stuff. They make it so cheap and they, and they make so many people lose their jobs and disrupt so many industries and they do it falsely. It's not like they're coming up with a better product and doing it more efficiently. They're kind of cheating. They're, they're covering the cost. And then investors say, wow, look how good they're doing. And people invest, they give them money. And then they lose their money when the real bill comes due. And I think that's, it's just, it's just not competitive. It's not fair. Maybe that's what really bothers me. I think you shop wherever you want to shop. I'm not judging anybody. Lord knows I've shopped at shady places. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I certainly am not. But uh, but just something to think about uh, what's behind the scenes. How are companies getting it that cheap? Is it really that cheap or are they pulling some, some sneaky business? I don't know. This isn't an economics channel. It's an art channel. But this is Sat Chat and, you know, it's a box of chocolates. So uh, <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.